Hello. Welcome to Country Stitchers. I'm Liz. Hi guys, I'm Deb. We get together um, every couple of weeks now to share the joy of needlework. Um, I've been stitching for over 40 years. You've been stitching for a few less than that, maybe one or two. <laughs> um, and we haven't done a video in two weeks, mm -hmm. um, and a lot's happened in that two weeks. Yeah. Last time we did our video, do you remember we commented how warm it was that there was a yeah. guy in jean shorts when I drove yes, up? Yes, yes, yes. It is so cold here today that yeah. I almost was thinking, I wonder if Deb will come here instead of <laughs> going to Deb's house. It is freezing out there I know, in that and wind. It's windy. Last night was horrible. Yeah. Ivan and I went out and he had to do his last call outside to go potty and I kept thinking, go. I'm go, surprised he didn't go. blow away. Oh that was awful. man, yeah. it was horrifying. Yeah. The wind was terrible. Yeah. Still waiting on snow. Yes. We did Hopefully have... we'll have a tiny bit maybe this Saturday into Sunday, possibly. We had a little sleet that one yes. day that we had some weird temperatures going up and down, yeah, but it yeah, didn't that was stay. It. No. So, still waiting. Um, since we were together last, you and I made a trip to a local needlework store. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, went up to HodgePodge. Yep. And we'll talk about some of that. And mm -hmm. I did some stash digging and I did some finishing. Mm -hmm. And you did some. Ugh. Well, you finished some stitching. Yeah, a little bit, yes. Yep. Yes. Um, yes. Oh, and I learned a new language. I learned how to read a crochet pattern. Mm -hmm. Yo. <laughs> yo and flow and uh, and yo and yo. I, that's in there a lot. Uh, yeah? Yeah, yo. yo. <laughs> <laughs> it means yarn over. I did figure that out. There is a page at the beginning of this book I'm using, and it has all of the abbreviations. Yeah. So I'm... Looking at the pattern and I'm back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth till I can figure out what I'm supposed to do. And there might be like six of these abbreviations in a row. And oh once you translate goodness. them, then that's what you do for that particular okay. round. Uh, I was stitching something in the and round, it's not the same which as I'd texting, never done huh? before. <laughs> <laughs> no, texting I'm getting better at. Um, but mm -hmm. there's a, a yo, a flow, a foe, and a knifeo. Oh my. Yeah. And those can appear anywhere oh. at any time. <laughs> um, and I got all my Christmas stuff put away. Oh, good. Yeah. My tree is still up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. And a very big, tall tree, which you saw in the video. It needs to um, come down. But How long do you think it'll take to put that away? Oh, I don't think it'll take long. We just have not been home. Yeah, you've we, been busy. We have been so busy. We had New Year's. Which, by the way, Happy New Year. I think we forgot to say that, too. <laughs> yes, we did say Happy New Year at the end of the last one before it became New Year's. <laughs> um, we had farm show week right after uh, New Year's, pretty much, and uh, we just ended that. Uh, well, it's still going on. Yeah, I mean, part our part ended, in, yeah. what, yesterday? or Yeah. yeah. Tuesday. So it's been um, crazy because you're up, you know, 4.45 a.m., and you have a long day. You go to bed <laughs> late at night. It's just... But it was an awesome week. Logan showed one of our um, Black Angus, and he did great. This was his first time in a national show, and he got second place in his um, division, and that was just, uh, that was awesome. I really, uh, we were just blown away. He did so well. And and this is not a local high school type show. No, I this mean, was a national was, show. Yeah, yeah, he was going against people who had a lot more experience than he Yes, was. yeah. Yeah, he did really well, and um, it was just, it was a great experience. We had a lot of fun, so hopefully we'll do it again next year. It doesn't hurt him at all that he's a good-looking young man, either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't know how many judges are were female, but were there any female judges? No. Really? All male? No. Wow. No, not it. I mean, I'm sure there are, but not for our, Yeah. not for what we saw. Yeah, so. Did he intentionally wear the same shirt as that guy next to him? Uh, they were similar. They weren't. They almost looked identical on the video right, that you showed me. Right, right. I yeah. thought, maybe it's a uniform. <laughs> no, no. Well, he didn't show. He, he has to wear his FFA uniform when he shows local. Okay. But he didn't here. He okay. didn't have to right. wear it there. So. And that has like an emblem in the jacket and everything. Yeah, on, it has right? a huge emblem on the back of it. And he has to okay. wear his, his tie and his black trousers. And okay. there's a whole dress code for that. All right. This was just, um, you needed a button-down shirt, you know, and come as you are yeah yeah yes it looked like he but was I was very very proud of him and whoever i um, those of you that follow me on instagram also and left lots of kind messages for him i had him reply to all of you <laughs> did you really yeah fun. and he had fun reading your um 
congratulations and, and everything. So thank you so much. Um, that was very sweet. We had a good time. And Monday, wait, Monday? We took a break in the middle of Farm Show Week. For Christmas, I gave McKenna one of her Christmas presents was a trip to um, the Hershey Spa to get oh, a massage. Oh, fun. And she had never had a professional, you know, full body massage before. So we went there for the day and that was such a nice break in between Farm Show. <laughs> we stayed there for the whole day. And when was this? Monday? Oh, okay. I think. Monday. Oh. Okay, I think so. Between the end of the showing and the and the sale. Yes. Okay. Yes. And um, oh my goodness, we had a ball. Oh, if you ever get a chance to pamper yourself if you're in the area, that is the place to go. Yeah. It was awesome. And the best part is you don't have to leave after your massage. You can stay there, which we did. <laughs> and we had lunch. We had, um, you. they have a pool, steam rooms, um, saunas, all these quiet rooms. Just you don't want to leave yeah. inhalation rooms i mean it's just you and you're in your robe and slippers the whole time it's so much fun neat so we had a, we had a good day together that fun. was a good time you did that once before you and matt took a trip up there right he took me for valentine's day yeah yes yeah but he didn't go to the spa with me he basically went to the room and hung out while i was in the spa oh so okay while it was fun and i enjoyed it yeah it was a lot more fun with oh, mckenna sure with yeah. the company mm -hmm. yep yeah yep so we had a good time. Yeah. And we also um, thoroughly enjoy, even though there's two weeks in between our video parts right now, mm -hmm. um, the comments that you send and the emails. And um, you had several comments, and I have a few emails that came in that I wanted to comment on. Yes, yeah. Um, Kathleen Gay, she wanted to know if I used regular conditioner with my horse shampoo. <laughs> <laughs> Another mane and tail. Um, I do. I just use, uh, I can use either professional um, conditioner or you know, over-the-counter conditioner. Um, so also, it was Stitching Trucker, which I love that name. And do you think she really drives a truck? I would doubt it at all. That's there awesome. are a lot of female That's truck awesome. drivers nowadays. I could not do that. I don't think I could do that. Um, I would I would run over everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, really, even driving the truck you drive? And I, when I have to haul the trailer, yeah. I get so nervous. Oh, it's another story with the trailer then. Oh, I get so nervous yeah. because you have to make such wide turns. And, yeah. oh, I don't I don't like that. Okay. I, I don't. All right. But, yeah. Because the last I knew, you hadn't run over anything in the truck. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Uh -uh. No. And, no, the truck's okay. Okay. I just don't like it when I have to haul the trailer. Okay. Too. Oh, Matt's always like, you can do it. You can do it. I'm thinking, no, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, you watch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can watch as I run over everything. <laughs> he said I could do Don't it. Don't stand in my blind spot. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> anyway, um, she. Remember how we were talking about how you'll um, you'll tab your pages uh, to to reference um, a pattern that you find uh -huh. in a magazine or something. Right. She goes all the way. She's amazingly um, so, uh, efficient. <laughs> she said she keeps a notebook where she can index all her patterns that she likes, you know, from magazines or books. And she has columns then for which magazine, which book it's in, the date, description, page number. Then the notebook is tabbed for stuff like for her or her friends or kids or babies, holidays. So then she can just flip to something. If she wants to go to Valentine's Day, she can just flip to it and she can find it and she has it completely logged mm -hmm. where that pattern is. So so she has it set up like a database. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. That I just thought that was really interesting. That's Very cool. Geeky. Yeah. 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 I know somebody like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I could make the comment. <laughs> I knew you'd appreciate that. <laughs> I just, we just wanted to give a shout out to um, Michelle Garrett. You know her as Bendy Stitchy. Thank you so much for your sweet comment. Um, she when we were talking about how we were thanking. Floss tube, um, she thanked us, which oh. was very sweet and very kind. Um, and I wanted to say hi to Tina. I think it's Hayward. Um, she hasn't cross stitched since the 80s, but her best friend got back into it, and okay. so she joined the wagon, and now she's just head over heels in love with everything. Um, she does have a re request, though. Um, linen is totally new to her, and okay. the closest LNS she has is over an hour and a half away. Um, so she said that she has poured over the floss tube community and she would like clear instruction on how to count linen thread. Okay. Um, so we were thinking that, yeah, we, we 
we could easily help you with that um, and it would be fun to do so if you give us till the next video mm -hmm. sound good yeah. um, it'll be two weeks from now this video by the way and I should have made a comment about it at the beginning but I I didn't um, we're going to split this video into two parts um, they're getting longer and it'll make it a little bit more uh, manageable for people to watch because who has the time <laughs> <laughs> yeah and so um, we're going to split this video into two. You can watch those two parts over the next couple weeks, and then we'll do another video two weeks from now, and that'll be when we'll talk about the the counting linen. Yeah, yeah. Um, and hopefully we'll do you proud, and you'll be able to do it. Yeah, gonna... yes. Um, and I wanted to say hi, hi to Becky Buckhold. Um, she left us a very sweet uh, email. She uh, recently found us, and she can um, relate to you because she actually had um, a stroke mm. um, and then another stroke and she was you know unable to cross stitch until recently um, but she's determined to succeed so um, she was just very grateful that she's being able to get back into it and she, her, she is around um, her local shop is called keepsakes um, it's in an old house and she said it's very charming and the owner is Barbara and we just wanted to give you a shout out Barbara and um, just say hi, and Becky wants you to know that she loves you. <laughs> <laughs> Feel the love. Yes. <laughs> and Becky, good for you. Yes. I'm glad you can stitch again. That's yes. awesome. Yes. Um, different things that come our way, especially physically, um, can change those things real quickly. And um, my stitching's really changed. I look back now, and I have bins with patterns in them and samplers that I would absolutely love to dive into but one of the things I have the most trouble doing is stitching on a frame now um, so yeah. I've been doing a lot of stitching on smaller pieces that I can stitch in my hands yeah. um, I I was thinking to myself why don't I have anything on my walls not the least of which is I don't like the color of my walls but that's <laughs> another story um, and I picked it I picked it <laughs> yeah but my husband would have to paint it and um, and I do have a lot of finishes in my curio cabinet, and I thought, wow, yeah, you that do. really is a big change yeah. in how I used to stitch. Yeah. I took on big samplers and lots mm -hmm. of things like that. So I'm hoping with some changes in what I'm using, I can gradually get back to doing some of those larger pieces. Yeah. But just don't give up, and if something's not working, um, give it a try a different way. Yeah, yeah. And I want to say hi to Mary <clears throat> Neurotter, I think is how you say your last name. Um, she is really interested, like so many of you, in the farm scene mm. pattern, yeah. the dimensions pattern. Um, so we yep, also, I heard from Yeah, we also got another Barbara. email yep. that, uh, do you want to Sure, talk Barbara about that? Um, sent us an email about that same pattern. Mm -hmm. um, she had taken it upon herself because she'd heard different versions of whether they're still available, whether they're still being manufactured. Mm -hmm. um, some people call it out of print, but with the kit, I think it's about whether or not they're being manufactured mm -hmm. anymore. And she contacted um, the company, which is now Dimensions is owned by Wilton Enterprises. Um, and that's that company that makes all those baking things, yeah. that Wilton. Uh, and she, um, had information given to her about people contacting them. They would love to know what we have an interest in as a community of stitchers mm -hmm. um, and what we're looking for. So I'm going to put Barbara's information about how to get in touch with Wilton in our drop down box. Um, for those of you who are new to Floss Tube, there's a small arrow underneath the video um, on your device. It, you won't find it on a television. Mm -hmm. um, and on the computer, I believe it's in the same place, off to the right-hand corner of the video. Okay, I never watched it on a computer, so I'm um, not sure. But click on that <clears throat> arrow, and there'll be information that we place there, and we usually have it filled by the end of Friday, and mm -hmm. it could be late Friday. It just depends on how my day unfolds. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll put this information in there, and I'll put in the link to Wilton and a suggested text about what it is we're asking. And if everybody who's interested sends an email off to Wilton, yeah. um, at the very least, it'll be interesting to see uh, what their response is. Yes. So yes. maybe we'll... Um, and thank you, Barbara. Oh, my... Nevada yeah. Stitcher. Thank you. That That's awesome. Yes. And 
Um, another inquiry about the pattern. Um, there was a question about whether or not the pattern had information about the floss. So if you were through with the kit, could you share the pattern and let someone else kit it? I have conversions for all of the DMC to dimension kit numbers, uh, or thread numbers, excuse me, in the kit. And that's also published on the internet <clears throat> in uh, the Stitcher's Village. Um, and I can put a link to that for those of you who want access to that conversion chart. Uh, so if you can find the pattern from someone who's already stitched it, you can also find the conversions mm -hmm. for the DMC floss mm -hmm. if it's not directly listed. Yeah, okay. Um, Edwina Bang, she wants to know um, if we have any more information on the Madeira's country cottages. Um, we showed those last video yeah. as a subscriber tribute. Yep. Um, just basically uh, see if you can find them on um, one, two, three stitch mm -hmm. or I don't know where else. Um, I would go um, look at ABC stitch, one, two, three stitch, um, and do a, a Google search. Yeah. Um, I found them in a lot of uh, stores. Also, if your local <clears throat> needle workshop has a section of older patterns, mm -hmm. um, they did come out, oh, I think it was in the 1990s. Okay. Um, but I found them online as okay. well. Also, magazines. They had a couple oh, of yeah? inserted uh, articles in magazines at one point, too. Okay, nice. Um, Kathy Janice, um, she wants to know how we store our floss. <laughs> <laughs> we were time? talking about this. Yeah. <laughs> We were talking about this. Um, Liz has a really cool way that she stores her DMC floss. Um, so the next time, hopefully, that we're over, that we're able to be over her house yep. and filming, we've got to show you that. Yeah, I had, I had help with it, um, but I always had a vision of what I wanted to do with my my I call them my working threads for DMC versus my other threads that I store. So it's kind of fun. Yeah, and it, it, you'll love it. It's really cool. And she also. You have shown that you store your overdides on the big rings. Yes, yes. Right. My overdides from General Art, Samplers, Weeks, mm -hmm. uh, Classic Country, or mm -hmm. Classic Color Works. Yeah. Right now, I just store my DMC in one of the plastic containers because I have them mostly on bobbins. But um, I think I'm going to be looking into something different because I'm not happy with that. Because once your little section is so tight with all these bobbins and you ha still have to stick one in there yep. and you have to move all the other ones and that's extremely frustrating yeah so I'm not going to continue to do that <laughs> but right now that's how they are yeah yeah and it yeah and if you're like <laughs> me you reach your fingers in between those oh, little sections and you pinch and then you pull them. out six of them well they all like pop out yes they explode oh. you've got your tension on the top and then they blow out the bottom and you're playing yes. 52 pickup yes yep um, um I had a uh, an email from uh, Donna and I was so glad she didn't do this but she was talking about being at a point where she was going to trash her stash <gasps> this was back yeah in the 90s um, but in the last year she got herself a lighted magnifier uh -uh. and she's been able to stitch um, a prairie schooler Santa Aww. and two just nan mice Wow. And so you keep going. That's awesome. Yep. Yep. Gosh. I was excited that she didn't do that. Nice. Yes. Yep. yep. Good for you, Donna. Yes. And I um, also wanted to thank, we had a lot of people who sent uh, or made comments and sent emails about um, the yarn that I needed yes. for those little dolls that I'm making. And um, I've tried to get in touch with people about it. Um, and thank you very much for your assistance and your mm -hmm. help yeah. on where to find it. And some of you who had some, you were willing to share. So mm -hmm. that was fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, Claire Marie, she, very, very sweet comment. Thank you so much. Um, she had a really cool tradition, though, a New Year's tradition I had never heard of before. She said they eat 12 grapes one for each month of the new year on the stroke of midnight, huh. which she thinks is Spanish. But isn't that cool? Yeah. I've never heard of that before. And I actually made it till midnight this year. I don't usually do that. <laughs> I know. When you said you were up and you sent me I that, sent you text, that text, I was yeah. going, whoa, she's partying tonight. No. <laughs> I just wasn't up. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I had never heard of that tradition. Had you? No. Yeah. No. Nope. That's different. That's cool. Never have. Yeah. Um, Paula 
send us a note. Um, she's going to be coming in March. Um, so we're going to get back to you. She comes down here. You're coming to my house? Oh, <laughs> nice. I think she said she comes down here for um, a quilters. Is that the quilters oh, convention? in Lancaster. Yeah. Ah. So um, I have your email. I'm going to follow oh, up with it. Nice. And so maybe we can um, actually get a chance to say hello. Yes. Yes, definitely. Um, we wanted to say hello to Joan Brown. She left us a very, very sweet comment. And she said that, she said we're enablers, but in a good way. <laughs> um, she said so much so that she has decided to start her first Heaven and Earth design. Oh my. And she's 81 years young. Way to go. That is awesome. You go, girl. Yep. That is awesome. Will you let us know what pattern, uh, if, maybe you've already chosen it, um, yeah. but will you share it with us, what yeah. Heaven and Earth design yeah. you're doing? That is amazing. That's wonderful. Oh my goodness. She also wanted to know how I cook my pork and sauerkraut. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and Diane Zaslow, she wanted to know too. The way I do it, um, just get, uh, I don't get um, meat from the stores because we have our own uh, pigs. So I just get a cut of um, usually a shoulder roast. And um, again, I don't buy sauerkraut from the store because it's not hard to make. And also, my sister-in-law made some this year, so she gave me some. Right down the road, we have lots of Amish here. Our Amish friends, they'll, you know, they'll give it to us. So just um, put the roast. I used a crock pot because I wasn't going to be home um, for most of the day. And salt and peppered it, browned it, and then put my, um, my um, sauerkraut in. Mm -hmm. And then I chop up two apples, and I put the chopped apples in, and just a sprinkling of brown sugar, and just let it cook until um, you know the pork is finished and it's ready to go with your mashed potatoes. And it was yummy. Do you know what they do to cabbage to make it sauerkraut? Ferment it. I mean, you just it's just a fermenting process. Is it with That's vinegar? All. With salt and, <laughs> you can ask me. I'm sorry, um, I just never, I, I always wondered, but I never, yeah. never inquired. Yeah. Um, mm, I, I don't know, I can't remember. I'll have to it's, check it out. I, because it has a, a very unique flavor. Um, somebody was mentioning about the fact that they'd never had it and on one of the comments, and I thought, how would you even describe that? Um, it does taste a little vinegary. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just it's just fermented. Yeah. Um, it's, it's different. I mean, I can eat it raw. I like it raw. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. good. Yeah. I put some in my homemade beef vegetable soup last week. I made a big sour of it. I did. I put cabbage in my beef vegetable and soup. And that's what made me think about it. I was putting in, you know, I'll, I'll save leftover vegetables yeah. um, in a bag, and then I'll put those into my soup yes. if I have them. Yeah. If I don't, I go a different direction. But in this particular case, I was going through my fridge, and I had a couple containers in there, and I thought, I wonder what that sauerkraut would taste like. It's cabbage. It's fermented. At the very least, it'll just add the cabbage to it. And I didn't put in, like, a volume of it, but I put in maybe about four or five good forkfuls. Really? Uh -huh. And it was really good. Wow. <laughs> it was good. Good. That's great. Well, you like it, right? What would what did you think it would make it taste like? Well, I don't know. I don't. It kind of dis because your your vegetable soup has a tomato base, right? Right. Yep. And it just sort of just blended right into it. Yeah, I, I don't know. To me, that sounds funky, but mm. I, I hey. <laughs> You'll have to try the soup. We can name it Funky it, Soup. Funky Soup. Want some Funky Soup? It did come out good, though. <laughs> That's great. That's awesome. It would have been sad if that four forkfuls yeah, of would have ruined the whole trash oh, no. soup. Yeah. See, I didn't even think about the fact that it was tomato-based. I just figured that that would I mean, cover I, the I taste of sauerkraut. I put raw cabbage in my yep. vegetable soup. I yep. just never would have thought to put in I just didn't have a head of cabbage. Crop. So, <laughs> hey, there's cabbage. It's just a little different <laughs> form. <laughs> Cooking oh with my. Liz and Deb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my. Um, I wanted to say hi to Joy Davis. She is, um, oh, she's widowed and she's housebound. And she just wanted to let us know how much she enjoys, um, she calls it visiting with, with us, with friends. Um, because she's housebound and she no longer, you know, gets out and isn't driving, um, she thinks of us as, as obviously her her connection and, and other floss tubers and that's awesome. That is that is definitely sharing the joy of needlework. Yep. You know? 
Yep. Um, it doesn't matter if she doesn't feel well enough to get out of bed. She can still hang with us and visit with us. Right. And, you know, it, it's that's just awesome. So, Joy, thank you so much for sending us um, a, the little note. And um, I'm glad that you have family that you're also um, able to be with. Yes. So that's wonderful. Yes. And it is hard when you're housebound. Um, when Deb and I first met, it was at a conference. Um, and then with my disability things got worse over time and my only time out was if Deb would come along and go somewhere and say you okay are you up to it we'd go out mm -hmm. for the day um, I had stopped driving I didn't lose my license by any means but I had stopped driving by choice because of how it made me feel after yeah. I had driven um, so I can relate to that and how small your world can get um, and that's part of why when I started watching Floss Tube on my own before I got Deb to watch it with me, um, I I think I enjoyed the fact that I could interact in a in a different way with the person that was on the Floss Tube channel um, about yeah. something I really enjoyed. Yeah, and I I may not get an immediate response, but I knew something different would be on a different channel or something different would be coming on the next video. And yeah, and it does it. It gives it you something you to look forward to. It, yes. Yeah, it really does. And yeah. that's the thing for me that was that was missing during certain times. And and even um, if my back troubles me for a period of, of weeks, not having something to look forward to can be the difference of having a, a better attitude yeah. about it or not having a better attitude about it. Yeah. So yes. we'll do our best to continue to share the joy from this end. <laughs> um, Linda Nacy? I think um, she wants to know what the linen is called that I'm using for my ornaments all around. Um, I had it behind us in the, one of the last videos uh, on the round quilt frame, and it is uh, "Days Gone By" is the name of the fabric. And it's 32 count, <laughs> and that stays with us all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we had to go look that up ourselves because we didn't remember. Um, I a lot of behind the scenes work here today. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. We will, we will have had two to one we'll minute. What time probably. is it? Huh? Yeah. Um, and also, I wanted to say hi to uh, Maria who sent an email. Um, she sent several actually. She's doing a smaller sampler that I hadn't seen before by Birds of a Feather. Ooh. Who, by the way, I didn't even see any of their designs. I wasn't aware of them until that um, Mustang Sally. Oh, okay. Piece went around. Um, and that was kind of fun. Um, so that's a designer I have to remember next time when I'm at LNS to go look at some of their other patterns. But okay. she wanted to share it because it was being done with silk. Ooh, okay. um, and it is. It's very mm. pretty. Yep. Um, yeah. oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> I forgot. The main reason I brought up that email was because she was talking about uh, a shop up where she is called Traditional Stitches. Ooh. And she said they okay, have. She is where? Can, uh, can She's near the Canadian border. Um, I think she's, I'm going to say Minnesota or Michigan. It's oh. up that direction. Okay. I hope I got that right. I don't have her mailing address, so I kind of put it together based on what her emails say. Okay. Um, but it's a shop that seems to have a fair amount of those older patterns mm -hmm. along with the newer nice. designers. So she was mentioning that it was a great place to go look if you were looking for something. I love that. That was the variety. Yep. Yeah, that's great. Uh, Bonnie Dudley. She wanted to know the um, the name of the 19 count um, fabric when I'm stitching um, my widgets and wool pattern. Uh, Better not pout. That is, it's 19 count and it is called cork. And I got that at Salty Yarns. Yeah. Um, and then also Sandra D, she wanted to know on the same pattern, am I stitching um, over two? Yes. <laughs> let me, let let me, me count it. Let me double check. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that yep. was over yep. two. Yep, over two. <laughs> it's sitting right here. It's over two. And I had a comment from Liza, and this is a fun one. She sent a picture of something, and she said, I wonder if you've ever seen this designer. I just saw him. I'm in love. Yes, actually, I fell in love with the same designer um, through a British magazine was where I first saw it. 
and I'm going to show this to Deb. I don't okay. know if she saw it over my shoulder earlier or not. Mm -mm. Um, but this particular oh, one is done by... That's um, cool. The designer's name is Hannah Dale Rendale. Um, oh, and it is an that's adorable so cute. pattern. That looks like my... Um, the detail that, like that they put into these pieces that she designs is what got my attention. Yeah. Um, it looks like it would be so much fun for a geek to stitch because of all the tiny little things that are on it. But I went and looked up that particular designer because I wanted to make sure that I, I that is could see if cute. there were some other um, pictures. And look at this one. I was oh thinking of Farm gosh, Girl when I saw that's this. adorable. What do you think about that oh. one? Isn't she cute? And then the other ones that I saw, like I said, were in um, the World of Cross Stitching and Cross Stitching. Or does she always use the same kind of colors? She does. She doesn't. Well, let me retract what I just said. Mm -hmm. I saw one where she did foxes. Ooh. And they were done in this kind of detail with all the little back stitching on it for their hair and everything. But that they were so done cute. with rusts and okay. yellows. So okay. she she stays sort of true to whatever the color is that she's doing. Um, but it makes you want to touch it. It's that uh, dimensional. Yeah. That's what I like about yeah. it. So this, yeah. I mean, this could be... A screensaver. I mean, it's so cute. I just love this little <laughs> llama. Um, so, if you want to uh, share in um, Liza's joy, uh, that designer's name was uh, Hannah Dale Rendale. And um, you can look her up at, I think I found her on Etsy as well as um, a couple of uh, just online shops. I did a search. So Okay. Cool. Any more? I'm, I'm Anything good. Anything else? You're good? I'm good. Okie dokie. Um, so, Leela, hi, Leela. She had a couple questions for us. Um, she wanted to know when we railroad, do we do it through the whole stitch? That's a matter of choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, some people do both legs of the yeah. railroading. Um, yeah. When they come up uh, for their first leg, they go through it and they do it on the way back. Yeah. Some people do just the top leg. Yeah. Yeah, that's what she was saying. She only does the, the top cross, and that's that's fine. Yeah. Um, she also said she has a project that calls for Weeks Dye Works Oscar mm. and Skinny Dip. Okay. Oscar seems to be silkier, more smooth than the other color. How can that be when they both come from Weeks Dye Works? Mm. Okay. Yeah, that's... I heard something about how the process is for, for these over-dyed threads. Um, some of them use a basic thread from DMC as their base thread. Um, I'm not going to say it's always white. It could be an ecru. Um, I'm not exactly sure, depending on the designer. Mm -hmm. But you can actually have two different base threads within the same um, manufacturer. But if you use a dye that has different properties, it'll affect the thread differently, too. Mm. So I found when we were doing our homework uh, for our last pre-stitch, can't remember the name of the color we were using but it was that peachy color okay. that was in the center of all the flowers yeah. and mine kept fraying um, in the 40 count thread mm. um, or 40 count fabric and I asked Deb if she had that experience she said no but mine was and then I had a black thread that seemed to me to fray more and get fuzzier than my other threads okay so okay. I just think it's a matter of the okay. dye um, all right uh, she also said though that we, because this was around New Year's, she said that she was going to get her black eyed peas. A lot of you, I've got to try that at Southern. some point. Yeah, black eyed peas and cornbread. Yeah. Oh, well, no, you and I. I both mean, I've had, had cornbread, cornbread, but I've never yeah. had black eyed peas, so yep. I definitely got to try that sometime. So, Leela, you will have to make that for me. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> we know somebody from the South who cooks. Yes, that's right. Bring it on. Yes. Oh gosh. Okay. Well, I think. That is it. All right. Um, Want to go shopping? Uh, yeah. 
We were at um, Hodgepodge. Oh, wait, in no, Strasburg. I'm sorry. I have one more question. Okay. Linda Craig, she wants to know. She just thinks that's cool that you're a twin and that you have twin granddaughters. Ah. And she just wanted you wanted to ask you if you were identical or fraternal. We're fraternal. Yep. Um, and my twin granddaughters are also fraternal. Wouldn't that be awesome, though? I always thought it would be so cool if you had somebody that looked exactly like you. I had friends in high school that they would actually switch classes. I've heard of people doing that. That would be so much. Or playing a joke on somebody that comes to the door, like if a boy was coming to take you out on a date, it would be the other sister. <laughs> I think that would be so much fun. You can only do that like once. Yeah, yeah, you can get caught people, pretty quick. Yeah, people would start to be suspicious and not trust you. Yeah, yeah. I don't believe yeah. you, prove it. Yes, yes. I wonder how you would do that. Uh, I don't know. If you're truly identical, okay. identical. Sorry about that. I just wanted to That's bring that up. That's all right. All right. Yes, we went shopping. Well, I got one thing. No, that's not true. The reason why we went shopping is because I have been after a fabric for stitching the dimensions, the farm scene. Yep. I cannot wait to get started. And um, so I finally found 40 count linen when we went to HodgePodge. The farm scene, that's the one that is the dimensions pattern. Yep. yep, this one that I'm in love with right here. So I finally found um, 40 count linen. Well, I was so excited and I had time the other day that I was going to actually start it. Um, but Deb didn't read the directions very well because it talks about there's certain places where you need to use up to three strands of thread because they like that. It's with DMC, well, it's not over dyed, so, so they want you to use. Um, three strands of you know one of each different color to kind of give you that look. They call that tweeting. 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 Oh. Yep. Cool. Um, so I read that and I thought, well, I can't stitch on forty count. Then three threads. I mean, that's just that yep. is not going to look right. That's not going to look good. So. <laughs> Oof. Yeah, that'd be a lot to put in those. Yeah, in those that would spaces. not look good. So uh, yep. I'm not going to use that. <laughs> and then I finally found in my stash a piece of um, even weave and what did I tell you it was 28 count mm -hmm. I think and I'll do it over two yep. uh, and it'll be a little bit larger but at least I won't have to worry about it looking dis distorted yeah. because of all that going on yeah so I was kind of bummed that I didn't get to it yet but I will start it soon yeah but well, you started something else oh by the way the something else she started you got to watch the the second part of this to see it but it is well worth the pushing of the second button <laughs> uh, which is about all it takes to get there the only reason we're doing that is because our comments from people if I already said this elbow me but um, the length of it people are dividing it up mm -hmm. and so we just thought well we'll split it and then you yeah. can um, not feel so bad about leaving it sit because <laughs> you'll have more than one to choose from so all what right. did you get I got this design from Teresa Kogut, which, by the way, did you know she has some floss tube videos out? Yes, she I does. got to see one of them. I need to watch the rest, but uh, we love her. She's a great designer. We met her at the Merchant Mall in Harrisburg. Yeah, her, she's just, she's a wonderful designer. She's an incredible artist, too. Oh, my goodness. She had artwork there um, in yeah. different forms from yeah. her needlework, and yeah. it's beautiful. Yeah, but, I mean, that this, Teresa is where I... She's my go-to for anything punch needle. Mm -hmm. I mean, her designs, they're just gorgeous, yeah. gorgeous. But I saw this and I thought it was beautiful. It's called Hens in the Garden. So I, I had to get that one. And again, that's by Teresa Kogut. So I got the fabric for it and uh, I couldn't find all of the thread. Well, actually they call for some Valdani in here, which I'm not gonna use. I'm just gonna substitute, so. Got my hands. And that one isn't a, that one's a cross stitch, not a punch stitch. This needle, one's right? a cross okay. stitch, yeah. She might also have it, and she does a lot of that where it's the same design, but you yes. can get it either right. or. Yep. Because um, I, I think that one is one of those punch needles because I think yeah. I asked you at the shop one day, I saw that. Oh. Um, I think that was the one I saw up at. Um, oh. I don't remember seeing this one before the other day when we went to um, Hodgepodge. Okay. But I had gotten that other chicken one. That was Teresa's. And oh, that, that might be what I'm that thinking. That was of. in both. Yes. Okay. We All saw right. that in both at the Merchant Mall. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I thought that was cute. Um. At uh, Hodgepodge, we were just getting ready to leave. Well, first I found a, a pattern, and it reminded me of something. My granddaughter Kylie, she has um, a channel. 
that she can watch YouTube and she calls it pineapple power and she has oh. a pineapple on it. When I saw that, I thought, oh my goodness, she will just love that. Isn't that pretty? That is very pretty. Jeanette Douglas does some really pretty yes. things. I love the drum. I'd really like yeah, to, I do too. to try the drum. And it's even pretty as a That's sampler. That's what I was just looking at. I yep. like that. Yep. Her, her, you, you can get different stitches. I mean, it's just beautiful. Yep. And then um, we were leaving. I had picked up the threads I needed. And I'll show you what I'm going to start with that when we get to that section. But um, I said, you don't by any chance have any other with thy needle and thread patterns. Um, I said, there's one I keep thinking of. Mm -hmm. It's a Quaker pattern. And I can't remember the name now, but I looked it up before we left. Anyway, I said, it's it's got a bird in the middle and it looks mm -hmm. very, very Quaker alphabet, whole bit. And Marcia said, uh, yeah, that was right back here. Well, I don't go into all the different rooms in her shop anymore unless I have the money to do it <laughs> because I'll leave with more than I wanted to come out the door with. So, um, she said, it was right back here, I think, but maybe they're gone. Let me look. And sure enough, she goes, here it is. And she pulled it off the wall. It's called Quaker Handiwork. Beautiful. A lot of people are stitching this. It's just a really pretty design. What I like about it are the colors. I just think it's really rich looking. And at the same time, the group for my round robin, we've been doing more talking now than probably when we were doing a round robin. Uh. Um, and everybody's trying to keep tabs on what everybody's working on. And uh, Becky, who has a floss tube channel um, called Socks for Mom, she's a knitter and a um, stitcher. And she said, why don't we do another round robin? She was thinking of doing it with um, the Quaker coffee piece uh, by oh, Beth Twist. The one that says first or I drink. Or string sandwich, yeah. First, first I drink the coffee. Then I do the things. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And the thing is, I was just getting ready to start that. I have maybe a few stitches on it. Becky's getting ready to start it. Pat didn't have it. And Barb had already stitched it. So it was like, wow, well, we're kind of all mm -hmm. the way around the horn on that one. Mm -hmm. So uh, now where I lost my train yeah. of thought. But anyway, <laughs> this was the one I was thinking of because, oh, that's right. We went from doing that piece to saying, let's do a sal. Oh, okay. And it can be anything Quaker. Mm. So that's where I think I'm going to pull this little guy. Yes. I'm thinking that'll work really that's well. beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm excited. Yes. And that's all I got. All right. That's um, my big extent. Now, I'm going to move back in the past here for a second. Mm -hmm. Oh, but before I do, I'm going to do a little plug. Okay. Hodgepodge plug here for a minute. Okay. Um, Marsha is going to sell some things for me, and I just thought I would let people know that I'm going to have some of these up at her store if they're interested. Um, they're scissor fobs, and I love to make them. They're With not... The oh, great. You got a solid one. Mm -hmm. They're not... Um, what do I say? They're not the peyote fobs. Mm -hmm. These are just the beaded fobs. But they're fun. Yeah. They're blingy. Yeah, they're awesome. And, um... Now, can I do this without dropping them? No. <laughs> <laughs> Down it goes. You know what you could do? Just hook it over the back of the paper. I could, yes. Right. You can oh. hold some up, too, if you want to. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Not that one. And, yeah, it'll pop down. Oops. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> I'm coming to the rescue. I did not test this. No, this is, you're getting this firsthand. <laughs> Do you have any more? Oh. Um, and Hodgepodge is in Strasburg. Yeah. So if you're in the and area. this one I like too. It's a little yeah, that's cute. seahorse. I have a couple of these. And Very cute. And can you go forward? Yes. There we mm -hmm. go. Yep, yep. So anyway, these will be hanging around. Very cool. That's part of what I did with the last week there I had. Okay. I was doing these one afternoon. Yeah. There you go. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, now we got to get scissors to go with them. See, that's the catch when you're a stitcher. You find the fob, then you find the scissors. Mm -hmm. uh, that's right. But last video, I was talking about a friend of mine um, who lives next door who had been cleaning out some things and ran across a piece she started... Um, when her child was just being born, and it was a baby quilt. It was a stamped cross-stitch piece. Remember me oh, mentioning yeah. that? Well, she also mentioned that she had a piece of linen, and she wondered if I'd be interested in it. So anyway, we, we finally had a meeting of the minds. Uh, we got together and got to visit yesterday, and uh, she brought a piece of fabric along with her 
along with the project she's working on. This is just a small piece of it, and it is the most interesting piece of fabric. This actually is taken out of two pieces that are seamed together in the middle, and um, they're 84 inches long, and each piece from side to side is about 37 inches. So it's huge. We don't know what it was used for. We don't know why they seamed them together. Um, and there is a small selvage on each piece, mm -hmm. and then there's a small seam. Kind of looked like a tablecloth or um, some kind of cover. But when she handed it to me, I looked at it to see the count, and I said, oh, well, that's actually a nice count. It's like 32, 34. Then when she left, I looked at it again, and I thought, wait a minute. After we did that discussion on fabrics, I thought, I better check both directions. And it actually is one of those pieces of linen that they talk about, which is not even weave. It's a different direction vertically than it is horizontally. So one of the dimensions is 38, or excuse me, 37, 38 count, mm -hmm. and the other direction is 32, 33 count. <laughs> so Deb and I are going to test this out. Um, we were talking before the video about doing maybe... Um, just a plain alphabet mm -hmm. from a, a sampler and seeing what kind of results mm -hmm. we get on it so we're gonna we're gonna see where we go with it it's really cool fabric right. yes thank you sue um and the other fun part of this is this is just a small piece that was already cut the shade of this varies across the two big pieces nice. so you can get almost a beige piece or you can get it that has this, yeah, I love this. rust or this sort of pumpkin color mm -hmm. And Deb already showed me something she's thinking of doing on it if the um, <laughs> if the weave I had a pattern works. that came right to my head. Yes, when... <laughs> she did. She said, "Oh, this would be cute." <laughs> um, so that is very old, by the way. If I didn't mention it, this was her grandmother's, Aww. I believe. So wow. that'll be that'll be fun to do something on. And Aww. if Sue continues down the path she's on, she might do something on this eventually. Nice. The piece she brought for me to look at, the stamped piece is quilted and most people who do a stamped quilted piece go back and forth through it and you have your X's on the top. Um, she went so far as to keep all of her threads between the quilted top and the back fabric. You don't see her threads on the back at all. Oh, okay. She goes through the like batting. Like when she cross-stitched, you mean? Oh, nice. Yeah, she has done such Good. a beautiful job with this piece. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing it after she works on it a little bit. Um, and hopefully that won't be long before we get together to, to do yeah. some more stitching nice. and look at some more patterns. But then I had to show her a piece that came from my mother-in-law's hutch. Um, this was the insert. It's from Bucilla. And I thought, well, no. That just gives the information on the sizes and the tablecloth. So maybe this was just a purchased uh, piece. But then it says stamped tablecloth. So I looked a little closer, and it is, in fact, stamped with this embroidered design. And whoever did this, I'm guessing it was not my mother-in-law. She is not a needle worker. This is so pretty. Whoever did this, and I think it might have been... Rick's grandmother wow. did all the napkins and then did this tablecloth. Gosh, and that looks like a large tablecloth. It is. It's a 84. I think. Wow. What was the dimension on it? My goodness. The cut size is 60 by 80. Uh, wow. And then the finished size mm. is 58 by 78. So That is so pretty. And it's one of those timeless things. Like, I would yes. use that now. Yes. It's, it's just gorgeous. And I, wow. I am afraid to tell you that this was in the trash pile in my father-in-law's house. And I saw it there, and I said to my husband, oh, that my. is not going in the trash. That's awesome. Can you see? That is just gorgeous. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. I just. I love that gray. I color. know. It, all those it almost daisies. reminds me of a sepia. Mm. You know, the, the mm -hmm. browns yeah. when they do those pictures now to make them look aged. Gosh, that's gorgeous. So, anyway, I wanted to share that little blast. And it's blast. still in really good shape. It I is. did see a little bit of stain, but honestly... Those spots, the, the, the little rust spots. Right. Yeah, right I was here. wondering. Yeah. The way it looked, 
it almost looked like maybe it might have been part of the pattern. Do you think with those dots, like maybe they mismarked it when they mm. were tracing the pattern? Oh, uh, I don't know. Because I'm thinking maybe I should just try some water and a cloth and see if I can get any of that out. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, the, the linen itself is still in great shape. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not discolored no. at all. You know what would be interesting, Deb? Wow. I did not count this linen. Wouldn't it be interesting to see if this is an even weave? Yeah. Because this yeah. is not cross-stitched. This is uh, stamped, embroidered. So I wonder if we check this linen, if it's going to come out. So you can see here, well, I think anyway, some of the blue underneath. Okay. See that? Well, that's why I'm wondering if if it's even been washed yet. Mm -hmm. So maybe it yeah. might come out, those stains. Yeah, I because I don't, That's that seems like it might be something different. But I think it, I think you're right. I think it will come out. Especially if you, maybe if you take it to the dry cleaners or something. Yeah. Let them look at it. That's beautiful. Yeah, it is. Gosh, can you believe they're going to throw that away? Yep. And the back of it Ugh. is equally as pretty as the front. They did a nice job. Aw, yeah. Yeah. Gosh. Nice. Uh, maybe someday somebody will look at mine and go, oh, look. Yeah. <laughs> she took the time to finish that and How do that. How many napkins? Um, gosh, I think, I don't know the answer to that one. Six, eight, seven, eight. Yeah. Wow. Beautiful. I gotta make sure this is in the basket when I leave. Yeah. <laughs> Look. <laughs> <laughs> Quick. The other way. Um, that bell you heard is our subscriber tribute. Yes. Um, who do we who do we have today? We have two names today, and we want to say a big thank you so much for subscribing, for taking the time to leave comments, for hitting the thumbs up. Thank you so much. Yes. Um, the first winner is Patricia Shaw. You're winning a Exemplar Dames Design Company. Um, this is Amanda Robertson 1823 sam sampler. Oh, so it's a reproduction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hopefully you can see that, even though it's in the plastic. Very, very pretty. Pretty colors in there. Mm -hmm. So Patricia Shaw, if you can get a hold of us, we have our emails and um, Instagram ways to contact us. Um, like Liz said, in that drop-down section underneath um, our faces when you pull up the video. Yep. <laughs> Next the winner, Samantha Dreyer. She's winning, it's called the Strawberry Sampler, mm. and the designer is Eileen Bennett. I took a class mm -hmm. from I was just thinking, you yeah. met her. It's very, very pretty. Eileen Bennett does beautiful work. So, if uh, Samantha, if you can get a hold of us. And we'll send your goodies out. And thank you again so much. And I'm going to um, conclude this portion of today's video by sharing what I was working on last week. Um. <laughs> <laughs> it looks funny, doesn't it? Does, it? yeah. <laughs> You'll see what we're laughing at here in a minute. Um, first, the other portion of my shopping was to you went work shopping again? No, no. This is the other part I bought <laughs> when we were out. <laughs> no, never. Never. In fact I call and I whine. Yeah. I really wanted to go. Are you free? <laughs> Can't you play? <laughs> um when we were at Hodgepodge, I was looking for a fabric for this design. Um my friend Sheila gave me this pattern when we were away at the Jamboree. It's by Elizabeth's Needlework Designs. How appropriate. And it's Hi, the Sheila. antique animal <laughs> sampler. And she said this was so much fun to do. So I'm looking forward to starting it. So I had looked for fabric and I wanted to find some. So I went up there um, and bought a piece of mellow. Oh, mellow yellow. And got back. And some reason mellow was stuck in my head and I couldn't figure out why. Got back and I'm looking at the threads, which I had already pulled almost all of. And when I pulled them out and I looked at them on the mellow with all of them pulled, I thought, not sure that I like that as much as I thought I was going to. And so I pulled out my stash and I had gotten, this was done, the model of that design was done on 40 count. The mellow was a 32 count. Scratch that, 36 count. And so I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, I wonder what else I have. 
I remembered buying some fabric from Linda Duree. So I pulled it out and it's called Walnut Very and good. it's a 40 count. And it is, it's just a really pretty mm -hmm. neutral um, yeah. color. And I loved the threads on this. So I ended up changing my mind, whoops, <laughs> drop that tag, ended up changing my mind and going with this walnut and I love the way those threads jump out against that. Um, but then the mellow kept sticking in my head. Mm -hmm. I kept thinking, why is that in my mind? So I was looking at that Quaker Handiwork by um, Brenda Gervais, and I thought, that was that other pattern, the needleworker pattern that I bought by Brenda Gervais that has that sort of old-fashioned lady with the big red rosy cheeks and the big flowing skirt. Oh, yeah. Do you remember her? Yeah. You got it yes. when you got the... Cherry yes, Hill? Yes, yeah. Strawberry Hill, cherry, something like that. We always mix I know. up the fruit. <laughs> one of the berries. <laughs> it's one of those. We both bought them at the same time at Salty yeah. Yarns. And I opened yeah. it up, and sure enough, that was the suggested oh, fabric. Oh, nice. So you have the fabric for it. Same size oh, that perfect. I bought. It is one inch difference on both dimensions. Wow. And to the positive for me, so I'm good. Nice. So now good. all I have to do is pull the threads for that one good. when I decide to do it. <laughs> um, which, as you can tell, I've already pulled more than I'm going to work on but hopefully this <laughs> piece based on the size at 40 count what I liked about it was earlier we were talking about my being able to manage a sampler on a frame mm -hmm. and I'm I've been trying to move a sampler to something I'm doing in my hand but I just haven't gotten that far yet and this I think is going to fit on that larger lap stand the q-snap your q-snap oh mm -hmm. nice because you can stitch on with that one yep. that's nice and with the 40 count it's, yeah. it's good. I, one thing is wrong with this pattern, though. It doesn't say Deb on it. <laughs> okay, two things are wrong with this pattern now. <laughs> There's no Hank. Oh, no Hank? No. No. Mm -hmm. Well, it doesn't look like they're actually farm animals. You know, there are animals that exist outside the farm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No. Mm -mm. Only on the farm. <laughs> <laughs> there is a goat, though. There You're is, right. yes. Yep. There's no llama. There's an alligator. Yeah. Don't see them on a farm very often. No. Except an alligator farm. <laughs> they do have those down south. Oh. I've been to What's those. What's that? Is that a scorpion? That looks like a spider. Oh, okay. One, two, three, four, I five, six, not stitch seven, that. eight legs. Yeah, that I would, would not be, be stitching that. I'd well, put something else in there. What's this thing? That looks like a toad to you? Yeah, yeah me too. Yeah. So, yeah. animal? Mm, maybe. Animal, animal reptile? <laughs> Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Creepy crawlers. All the above. <laughs> so anyway, that should be fun. That is a pretty pattern. Um, and at this point, we'd like to just thank you for watching Part one. this half <laughs> of this week's video. And as usual, share, share the, the joy of needlework. Bye-bye.